Hello, bonjour, namaste, ni hao, and oh, hi, everybody. What is going on? It is Gail right here, and welcome back to the YouTube channel once again for another Don Machi Memorial Freeze video. And today, we are going to be taking a trip down memory lane as we are going to be revisiting one of the best game modes Don Mimo has ever made, but unfortunately, it was also replaced within a few months by some other game modes. Now, of course, if you guys go on to enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel for more content, and let me know your guys' thoughts on this game mode that we're going to be talking about today do you guys like it dislike it of course if you have never played it i'm curious to see what you guys have to say down below and of course if you have played it do you guys think that it was actually the best game mode that they had in the game and that it could have been something more or do you guys think I'm kind of over exaggerating a little bit here? Let me know in the comment section down below. Now, once again, I should shout out uh, Advisor Loner as well over here because, of course, he is one of the only few people to actually have some footage for this game mode still on YouTube. Of course, uh, back then we had a couple of other YouTubers specifically Techni, I think, was the biggest YouTuber at the time for Dan Mimo. And unfortunately, because he deleted all his all of his videos, we unfortunately have lost a lot of content from that era. The first two, three years of the game, unfortunately, just gone because, of course, he deleted his channel. So unfortunately, we can't go back and revisit those memories all that well. But of course, thanks to people like Advisor Lorne, who still have these videos up on his channel, I am eternally grateful for them so that we can, you know, come back and revisit these videos so that we can talk about them, especially as we're approaching the end of the game's service, especially for the international version. So once again, big shout out to him. Now, of course, the game mode that I am talking about here is, of course, the Rampage game mode. Now, if you guys don't know what the Rampage game mode is, is it's basically the predecessor to the Expedition or Dispatch quests and, of course, the Crafting quest. Because basically, the Rampage game mode was the way you would be able to obtain your crafting materials to craft weapons for characters like Eyes, Her Desperate, um, Asfi's Carnival Dagger. Specifically, the one we're taking a look at in Lorne's video actually has the materials for Asfi's Carnival Dagger. So basically, this was the way we would farm materials for our characters, basically. Now, it wasn't your normal stages, by the way. It wasn't just going into one stage, beating it, going into another stage, beating it. No, 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 no. It was a lot more complex than that. And it was probably, like I said, one of the best game modes and one of the best ideas they've ever had in this game. And it's a damn shame that after basically a year, you know, and this is something I have a problem with Dan Mimo in, in, in regards to this. They lost all innovation after the first year, in, in my opinion. I think they lost a lot of the innovation that they had in that one year immediately after the first anniversary, I feel. I think after the first anniversary, maybe even after the, you know, the Christmas after the first anniversary, so running into the second year, I feel that they lost a lot of the innovation that, you know, made them super interesting and made the game mode super popular in the community. That's my personal opinion. Of course, you guys can let me know what you guys think in the comment section as well. But yeah, let's talk about Rampage and why I think it's the best game mode. So basically, like I said, you had these normal stages, as you can see, you had normal, hard, very hard, and you had these floors as well. So you had floors one to four, floors five to six, floors seven, and so on and so forth. So you could keep going down a lot of floors. It was like a sort of like a dungeon crawler. But the thing is, right? You would imagine that it would be just like any other game mode, right? If, for example, I go into right now, if I were to pull up my game uh, again, right? If I were to go into the quest and if I went into, say, for example, not that Knights of Fianna, if I went into this Knights of Fianna, it would be something similar to this, right? Where I'd go into one fight, go into the next fight, go into the next fight and have no worries whatsoever, right? Because my team will be fully healed up and I can change my team and do whatever I want, right? In Rampage... It wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. You didn't you didn't just go into a stage and go into the next stage and then go into the next stage expecting everything to be fine and dandy and you to be able to change your team to accommodate for the enemies. No, 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 no. You had to ch keep the same team throughout the entire floor, basically, or throughout the entire 
stage and you could change it after one day but for that day you would have to keep the same team basically and from each fight they would carry forward the hp and mp now of course nowadays with of course the units that we have in the game you know your uh Haruhime's, your assists like ali who are able to regen uh, regen mp and obviously all these units that are able to extend status buffs and debuffs it wouldn't be as difficult right now but back then with year one units and prior to year one units right i mean you'll see some of the units that uh, lorne will use and some of the units that he recommends this was a completely different era this was a completely different era where we would be running some insane teams you know what i'm gonna bump up his volume and we can listen to what he has to say as well because of course i don't remember everything about this game mode outside of of course the fact that you would only be able to choose a certain team per day and then afterwards you can only heal your party three times per day and obviously the hp and mp carries forward and you'd have to do normal hard and very hard as well so something to keep in mind there so let's see yeah so confirm the selected rampage members rampage members can only be changed once per day so i think you could only choose a certain amount of characters per day um or you could only choose a certain amount of party members per day and uh unfortunately you couldn't you know keep, keep switching in and out you couldn't go back to your box pull out a character you want maybe if you summon for a character well you couldn't change it that day you'd have to wait until the following day to get that character in so that would be something crazy to do all right let's see yep that is something that is very true i remember a lot of people would do auto formation and that was the biggest downfall of a lot of people they would just run auto formation and uh obviously the game would choose the highest level characters but of course that doesn't mean you're choosing the right assists you're not choosing the right units that are able to you know potentially regen mp or regen hp throughout the fight so that you can basically you know last as long as possible for that day and for that attempt right so something to keep in mind there all 12 but keeping in mind to bring in the first lineup featuring mm -hmm. attackers physical attackers balance characters healers defensive another thing to mention as well i should mention as well is that this was an era when we obviously had n no elemental physical attackers it was physical attackers were neutral and then magic attackers had the elements that's it that was how it was worked and buffers as well as keeping in mind yep. useful making sure to have a balanced team of course as per usual this is just like it's just like how it is right now but of course back then it would be a lot more restrictive one thing to note as well is that it only cost well it cost zero stamina but it would give you iris as well it would give you these craftable materials again for me it was a perfect game mode and it made a lot of sense for the danmachi world you know we talk about how dancro doesn't really represent the danmachi world really that well and dan mimo to be fair did a good job but i felt like it slowly lost out that innovation and you know the ideas that they had to incorporate as much of the danmachi world over time by simply just saying okay we have war games we have this this and that and the stories are what's carrying it i feel like the game modes over time, I feel like they lost that innovation for the game modes. It felt like to me personally. Um, obviously, compared to at least what they started off with. Alright, but yeah. Let's, let, let's... There you go. Yep. There are no S-clear conditions. Yep, that is true. There, are, there were no S-clear conditions. So all you had to do was just beat the quest. That was it. All you had to do was just go in, beat the enemies, come out. Yep. While as you can quest. see the crafting materials now of course like i said right nowadays you would have to go into uh obviously the crafting quest stage over here in order to get the materials that you wanted back then you didn't need to do any of these the, this did, this did not actually exist before rampage uh left you know when rampage was around that was the way you would get all these crafting materials and stuff like i said i personally believe it was an amazing game mode i think it and i think it was the best way for people to get craftables and uh, crafting materials in my opinion i think it was so 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 cool um it's a shame that they kind of abandoned it in my opinion or just replaced it in all honesty try to play conservatively and use standard attacks for the easier quest and yep. start using skills again this is the uh, this Lorne is right yeah it was all about just playing it safe region assist characters as they are invaluable during rampage assist characters yep. so he goes on to talk about how you know having regen characters is so significant because like he said as well just a second ago 
the HB and MP carries forward. So you had to play conservative. You had to make sure you were, uh, you know, making, you know, you weren't overspending your MP or your HP uh, or, or, you know, struggling against enemies. So again, nowadays, I feel like, you know, with the units that we have, you know, like, I mean, if you sh if I show you guys my team right now versus the team Lorne used in that video, right? I mean, if we go into one of these crafting quest stages and ignore that team, like if I use a team like this, for example, like, there's zero MP struggles because, of course, Haruhime recovers 10% MP, so no issues there. Haruhime can also heal. Um, obviously, we have uh, the likes of Ali as well, who gives uh, 20 MP regen per turn versus that 3 MP regen per turn you saw on Hestia, of course, right? So, you know, this is something to acknowledge as well. And not to mention, forgetting all of that, because of the SA gate charge stuff, right? SAs don't use MP, right? So realistically if you could get a high sa charged uh unit or a high sa gate charge units right like the likes of your finn who gives 66 percent on their sa fiano who gives 33 percent on her skill uh, assists like obviously ali as well who give 33 percent sa gate charge as well you would not need it anymore but back then again like i said it was such a struggle and i feel like it would have been so cool if they kept it up and just evolved these stages as time went on like because again it represented the danmachi like yeah. sort of like world so well because it was all about going through the dungeons having a only a limited amount of party members a limited amount of heals and you know all all you had to do was just strategize strategize to the nth degree try and beat these stages by being as efficient as possible and in order to get the maximum rewards basically well for this purpose oh my god that nasa was so OP, man that nasa and this eyes and lafia the sparkling uh, sparkle princess eyes and lafia unbelievable units for this stage honestly because they had the mp region they had the hp region through nasa as well and nasa was a freely obtainable character because of a quest i think it was via quest quest the uh event quest quest i think it was uh freely obtainable there so i remember having that nazo on my team for so long including the size same with the lafia as well to be honest that too as well yeah 15 percent mp heal on the third skill for a lafia as well that helped massively recovery ones to clear through easier enemies faster and recover their mp for tougher encounters now there is a mechanic called yep. heal party mm -hmm. used three times a day. Yeah. Heal the HP and MP like you can see right there. Let's go back a little bit. Let me go back a bit. Let me go back to a, li a little bit there. So you can see that the HP is in the red there, right? That is signifying that well, you know, the unit has used up some of their HP and MP. You can heal it. Now this reset at uh reset itself, right? So that helped out massively. But yeah, it, it was still a struggle back then because you'd keep keep wanting to use it. That too as well. You can uh, reset the party as well accordingly. And you should make use of all those chances. If you happen to die or retreat during a quest, your progress is saved and you can start with the quest for the point you left off at. Same enemy wave and enemy health. You don't lose any yep. materials you may have that too as well i think if it, he'll probably switch it yeah you can see that the enemy hp is uh gone down as well so that was something that was another important point is to start a quest like a difficult boss quest get your first few hits in retreat then go back to an easier quest and because you'd regen your hp and mp this is a tactic that i didn't know about at the start when it came out and again because of the community and stuff we learned that that was a good strategy so rather than having to waste a heal or having to um you know so, you know struggle through a difficult stage because we've run out of mp or our hp is pretty low we immediately retreat on the turn that we can and then go up do a very early on stage or a very easy stage and then come back into that stage where we're struggling and go do it all over again basically would be super helpful now that your party is back to where you want it resume the quest you initially retreated from something that will occasionally happen is you will randomly encounter irregulars yes the original irregulars these bunnies in particular can drop gold ore which is a highly sought out material yep the higher quality equipment <laughs> and they, mind you back then irregulars dropped the gold ore, not even the mystic bellows or the uh, in, uh, secret hammers or anything of that sort because back then we didn't actually have those the idea of rehammering 
wasn't a thing back then. This is no, pre rehammering and reattributing and stuff. If you're struggling in a fight like the Goliath one, oh boy, a lot of AOE, a taunter like Wealth or Tione is recommended. If you have the new four star Oka to pair up with the taunter, this was when uh, three stars were usable, by the way. <laughs> Mind you, this was still when three stars were actually usable. Unfortunately, not anymore, sadly. Oh, covers allies from a single attack. What a, what a technique. This was unbelievable. It's crazy how so many abilities from back in the day have just gone you know um the counter ability from wealth the cover ability from uka insane insane again this is this is what i mean the innovation was just gone and i i, I guess part of it i guess was mainly because they wanted to keep try and keep things balanced in game modes like uh war games and stuff but this is what we missed out on i feel as well in our six years of don mimo you know it's just unique stuff because over time it felt like a majority of the units were just improvements of what they were already beforehand, right? They weren't. They didn't deviate or take a detour to something special or something different. It was well, very samey, samey. You could argue and skill, say, right? But yeah. To all allies. Remember that clearing through the Pals back in the day being useful, by the way. Give you better materials. Mm -hmm. the swap button to keep track of the quest you need to farm, and you can hit the materials button to see your current list of materials. Get. Oh man, keep track of what it's insane, man! Where. It's so crazy. You can see the materials you farmed as well, the star crystals, of course, and the silver crystals. Skills. <sighs> Don't forget, you can completely heal your rampage. Hold on a second, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you know we 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 uh. We teased uh, Don Crow for having like some stuff in Japanese still and stuff, right? I didn't even realize Don Mimo had the same issue as well. Look at the top and the stamina screen. <laughs> oh man, it's in Japanese still. I mean, like I said, I mean, the, no game is perfect when it comes out. That's the problem. It's the, it's just funny. It's just funny. I, I obviously, I do believe Don Mimo released in a much better state than Don Crow did, but it's still kind of funny nonetheless, you know. You'll be able to see the recipes of equipment. Yep, so this is how we managed to unlock the items. So you had to get farm the materials in order to see it for the first time. So you can see, yeah, Carnival, uh, Carnival Dagger. So I said Carnival Dagger. I keep thinking it's Carnival. It's Carnival Dagger is gold ore, star crystal, silver crystal. So you have to farm these materials in order to get one of these. Nowadays, we can get multiple copies, but back then, it would be a struggle to even get one or two copies, and not to mention the Valis issues as well. Oh God, it would be a struggle. Have bad luck and get a Canoval Dagger with 191 attack rather than the one with 223 attack. Clicking details will also show... We were... Uh, yeah, back then as well. We couldn't rehammer, so it was all about just trying to get as close as possible to 230. If you got 230, you were on top of the world there. But if you got 191, well, back to farming you go. Back to the Rampage game mode you go, you know? Equipment upon crafting. The weapon can oh, have not to mention... You couldn't change the stats. You couldn't reattribute. So good luck again. Hats off to you if you can manage it. Do keep in mind. Man. Weapons are better for certain characters like eyes. Man, I want. I want to go back to this time, bro. I really want to take me back to this period. Remember. Take me back. It's crazy, bro. It's so crazy. So. We have some time as you can see it, it got replaced effectively by the ramp, uh, by the dispatch quest stages and stuff, right? So if you go over to the game, right? Uh, we go back to the main menu. Yeah, it got replaced by other. It got replaced by seven zone and dispatch quest. So, yeah, and obviously dispatch quest. I mean, they tried doing something innovative there, but I, I, I know this was the better way to go. I think this is so much better than what we got with dispatch, in my opinion. You can trade the moon drop crystals you acquire in Rampage to the special exchange shop. Yeah, moon drops were still a thing, by the way. I should mention, you know, I I say that they weren't a thing necessarily, but. They were still a thing, but they were very limited and you had to farm quite a lot. Again, it incentivized farming, incentivized you doing the rampage mode and consistently trying to find the irregulars as well. So, yeah. But yeah, there you go. That's that's uh, Lorne's uh, a guide on Rampage. Of course, like I said, I, I will be leaving a link to it down below in the description below so you guys can go check it out for yourselves. But... Oh, what a game mode, man. What a game mode. Again, this is just a trip down memory lane. I am old. We need more game modes like that in Danmachi games, in all honesty. Just generally. Dan Mimo made a big mistake, in my opinion, letting go of that game mode. It was such a nice PvE game mode that came back every so often, every month, basically, or every half a month, I think it was. 
and uh, unfortunately it stopped after a point like i said it got replaced by dispatch quest and the crafting quest so there was no need for it necessarily but in my opinion they could have easily brought it back in some other fashion instead of seven zone i mean seven zone is difficult enough i understand but i mean i, I haven't i didn't do this week's uh, seven zone by the way um but in my opinion, I feel like the Rampage mode would have been so much more in enticing, so much more in enthralling if they had just done it. Because you could easily do the same things. You could have these two enemies in that game mode, but they would be the end floor bosses as you approach slowly and but surely towards there. And you could have like on the normal and uh, normal difficulty um, of the Rampage, you could have the hard difficulty bosses on hard. It would be the very hard bosses. And then the EX stage would be the very hard stage. Or they could have added an EX stage to Rampage just like they have over the uh, last few years with these game modes, right? And they could have easily done uh, uh, something where basically, you know, we face these mobs in one run, basically. In one run, back to back. And you had to strategize what party you were going to run, what sort of members you wanted to run, and so on and so forth. I think it would have been so cool, so, 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 so much fun. But alas, we lost it. We, we, we lost it and it never came back. Again, I really do hope that potentially Don Crow maybe takes a look at this in some way, shape or form. I mean, they'd have to look at five-year-old content for this. But there is stuff on YouTube still. Uh, I say that Advisor Lorne is the only one of the only few who has it. But of course, there are others as well. I think D Free, Scion Storm and a couple of others who created content on Don Mimo who still have their videos up. Have that Rampage video and guide up still. I'm going to obviously using this video, they could probably do something as well. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Let me know what you guys thought of the Rampage game mode. I'm curious to see what you guys have to say down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please be sure to leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.